What's up, people? I'm Shaggy the Opinionated Hippie, and this is part seven of my, my analysis of Apple Music's top 100 of all time album list. Quite an audacious project. Uh, I'm approaching this as if I'm an editor, uh, one of five, and I've been given this final list, and each of us has the ability to take off 20 albums. Um, so far, I've taken off 14, which exactly tracks, if I'm not mistaken. This might be part eight. No, this is part seven. Uh, at the end of this, I will have taken off 14, which tracks with two with every 10, because that's what it is. Um, I can keep an artist, but replace an album. I've done that four times. I'm only letting myself do that five times, so I can only do that once more. Um, and then I can move anything anywhere I want. So anyways, uh, this is 40 through 31. Uh, in very interesting group of 10. Um, it's pretty much all the rap and hip hop classics and then some interesting singer songwriter stuff. It's a weird mix once we get here, but yeah, I'm just going to go through these 10, uh, remove some, maybe, uh, keep some and all that stuff. Anyways, here we go. Uh, what is the connection to Frank Zappa? Sadly, there is none. There is none. He's not on this list. Uh, but I'm going to change that when I'm done with mine. Uh, anyways, number 40. Aretha Franklin's I Never Loved a Man the Way I Love You. Uh, keeping this, um, kind of surprised it wasn't Lady Soul. Um, I think this is a fantastic album. I mean, it's near perfect. It opens up with R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Uh, you know, uh, find out what it means to me. Um, but I think, I don't know. I think Lady Soul is just, a, is maybe, this one is like maybe a, 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 a three run home run and Lady's Soul is a grand slam. I mean, they're both gonna score and get you around the bases. Uh, but anyways, yeah, no, fantastic. I mean, fantastic, this is a great album. I'm definitely not replacing it with Lady's Soul. Uh, but uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Uh, but uh, any any album with respect on it deserves respect. Um, yeah, keeping this. Uh, number 39 is Nas's Illmatic. Uh, not only am I keeping this, probably going to move this up. I don't know what's in the top 30. Um, I have an idea. I looked over the list, but I don't remember. Um, but I might move this up. I think this is one of the greatest hip hop albums of all time. I love Nas's flow. I love the, the lyrics, I guess is what they are. Um, very personal stuff on here. Um, I think some of the best hip hop albums are very personal hip hop albums, and this is one of those. Um, yeah, I might move this up. This is absolutely fantastic. One of my favorite. Um, but yeah, keeping this. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Um, 38, Carol King's Tapestry. So my inclination at first was to take this off. I was like, uh, this is very much of a time, of an era. Um, when I was a kid, this thing was huge. I think every single person I knew owned this. Like I'd go to, you know, we lived on a cul-de-sac when I was a kid and I grew up in the 70s. So literally it was like 7.30 in the morning. My mom was like, eat breakfast and leave the house and we don't want to see you till the street lights come on. And you would just roam the neighborhood playing with kids or walking miles to other places. Uh, we'd go to the beach by ourselves. Um, but, uh, and everybody had this album. Like you'd walk into somebody's house and there was there was the vinyl album. It was, you saw it everywhere. Um, and so I went back and listened to it thinking it was just this curious little, I don't know, singer, songwriter type, whatever. Um, and then I realized it's maybe the best of the singer songwriters of the entire seventies. Um, and one song in particular, uh, my mom and dad were also big James Taylor fans and he covered You Got a Friend. And uh, another song I'm really ultimately, really, really familiar with from hearing it way too much. And um, the difference between Carol King's You Got a Friend and like James Taylor's slightly even more softer version of that, Carol King's You Got a Friend, there were moments in there where I'm just like, she's, re she's ready to throw down with you. Like, it's pretty straightforward. Like, th this is just one of the most basic, you know, piano. Let's just focus on the songs. Let's focus on Carole King. But just the little bit of, like, herself that's in all of these songs and, like, the personal the, the personal aspect or where she's coming from uh, gives these a little more uh, a little more heft. And plus, the songs are fantastic. Half of them are, like, huge 70s hits. Um, so I'm keeping it. I think it's actually... 
maybe there was a time when it sounded simple and dated, but I think we've come now full circle where something like this is like powerful just because it's so pristine and clean and its purpose is so just like, yeah, singer songwriter at its purest and the songs are friggin' amazing. Um, and some of them are absolutely heartbreaking. That doesn't anybody ever stay to, that doesn't anybody stay together anymore? Whatever song that is, uh, the title I forget. Um, th that's heartbreaking stuff, man. It's our heartbreaking lyrics. So yeah, I'm keeping Tapestry on here, number 38. Uh, number 37, we got the Wu-Tang Clan, Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers, 100% keeping this. Um, just absolutely fantastic, way too short. Um, to pull off having like nine different people all like part of something and yet it doesn't sound scattered and chaotic and it sounds cohesive and everybody's voice and flow and style just complements everybody else absolutely perfectly. The entire concept is brilliant. The album, the execution, everything, the clips that are used in here are perfect. Um, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a, a perfect hip hop album. Um, 37, I think is good. I don't know what else is on this list. So it, it, this was another one that maybe might move up a little. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, number 36 is Beyonce's Beyonce. I was kind of expecting uh, Lemonade to be on here. I think Lemonade, I think these are both S tier albums and this one I'm not taking off. Um, it, is a, it is a brilliant album. Um, if you, I mean, don't, if you have not listened to this album or haven't even listened to Lemonade, give Beyonce a chance. Like this is electronic R&B pop at its absolute best. Like nobody does it better than her. Uh, there's another album that's on this list. I, I have seen it. It's going to be in the next video. That is a more recent sort of singer songwriter, electronic pop, this kind of genre, not quite as R&B influenced. Um, but, uh, and just the comparison with what Beyonce is doing on this album and Lemonade, both of which I think could be on this list. And this other artist that's going to be at number 30 uh, in the next video. Just, it, it's like this, I don't know. It's just, she blows this other high, higher ranked album completely out of the water. Like her voice, her presence, the composition of the songs, the variety of the songs, the journey of the songs, the swag of the songs. Yeah, yeah. No, this is staying on here. Um, I might drop it lower just because there's other things that I have not found on this list that I think deserve to be on this list. But this is definitely a, a top 100 album, 100%. Uh, number 35 is London Calling the Clash. Yeah. Um, what hasn't been said about this album in the history of, of music criticism so far? It is punk at its most punk without sounding its most punk which is what makes it punk. The beauty of punk is it can be punk without sounding punk. And this is the album that says punk can be punk. Punk is an attitude. Punk is not a sound. Punk is a way you do things. It's not a, it's not a, you don't need simplicity. You don't have to like just be loud and raw. Punk can be other things. And this pretty much said, you can call us punk, but we don't care. We're doing all these things anyways. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant album. Um, yeah, it's one of those when I, when, when I have, I'm a, I'm a school teacher and I, I teach at a pretty, I've taught at a pretty small school for the past 20 years. Um, and I teach kindergarten and we go through eighth grade and there's a lot of kids who make it up, who I know through eighth grade, I know going into high school and there, and a lot of them, a number of them have reached a point where they, they know I'm a huge music fan. Um, I introduced my kindergarten kids to music, um. I don't know if I, if you, if you've not noticed, I got this as a, as a end of the year present this year from one of my five-year-olds in my class who, uh, we went and actually saw this band. Uh, I went to the show and he was there uh, he got me that as a going away present. So yeah. Um, but I, this is an album. If, if kids come to me and say, Hey, can you recommend an album of something great? I always give them this. This seems to open up a lot of doors. It's sort of my go-to. Yeah. Check out this album. 35. I don't know, this also might be higher, but who knows, we'll find out. And number 34, Public Enemies, it takes a nation of millions to hold us back. I don't think there is a better pairing, maybe not a better pairing in rap than Chuck D and Flavor Flav. Chuck D, I could listen to Chuck D 
narrate the traffic. I could ch listen to Chuck D do 40 minutes of weather reports. The cliche of the phone book thing, yeah. Give Chuck D a phone book, I wanna hear. But you know what else I wanna hear? I wanna hear Flavor Flav standing right behind him, adding little inserts and hyping him up and, and adding the color commentary. They are the, the greatest, Chuck D and Flavor Flav are like the greatest sports casting team of all time. They're like Mike Breen, NBA with Jeff Van Gundy as Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav is the Jeff Van Gundy of rap. And I mean that as the biggest compliment ever. And this album is fantastic. Um, yeah, just absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, but the combination of the two of them, I think is just one of the greatest pairings. And yeah, they 100% deserves to be on this list. Um, keeping this right here. Uh, 33, Radiohead Kid A. Um, yeah, solid choice. Um, thought maybe OK Computer would get on here. Um, was kind of hoping In Rainbows would be the one on here. And if I didn't use four of my five replacements already, I think I'd make a statement and take Kid A off and put In Rainbows on um, just to, to be that guy. Um, I think In Rainbows is from start to finish a little more of an exciting journey. Um, also provides a whole bunch of variety of different flavors and ideas. And I think the flow is maybe a little better on In Rainbows, but I'm not complaining about, about Kid A. Um, absolutely fantastic album. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it changed the landscape for music for so many reasons in so many ways. Absolutely fantastic. Number 33, number 32, The Notorious B.I.G., Ready to Die. Another one that kind of like Nas is Yomatic is just like, you, you feel the artist in here. It feels like a personal album. Uh, it, I mean, it's even way more personal because it starts off with like the giving of birth in the beginning, um, which is pretty intense. Um, but yeah, I mean, absolutely fantastic. Um, deserves to be on here. Uh, what a shame. Uh, wasted, you know, unfortunately, a life ended way too soon. Um, we used to run a poetry, I run a poetry slam here in San Antonio. I've run it for decades. And we were at a club um, during the pandemic, one of the rare, rare places that was open during the pandemic. And, uh, it was, it was after we had shut down about six months after we shut down, they opened up and they let us, uh, run the slam there, which we decided to do cautiously. We took precautions, but behind the stage, they just had a giant, giant version of this album cover, which was just right there looming behind us at all points in time. It, it was pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, this is easily staying on here, number 32. And then number 31 is Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill. And I went back and listened to this, and it's it's a great album. Uh, I don't think it's a top 100 album. I, I would say top 200. I, I can see the argument for that. Not top 100. One, Alanis Morissette's voice. I love it, but it is like, I'm not sure she can actually sing. She can sing, but like some of the runs she goes on and the things she tries to do, fascinating, full of personality, full of character. Like, you know who Alanis Morissette is at the end of this album. And there are some fantastic songs. Uh, the lyrics are pretty fantastic. It's what we needed in lyricism um, is that kind of just like unapologetic, just rawness. Um, but comparing it to like Carole King's Tapestry as a singer-songwriter type exercise, comparing it to Beyonce's Beyonce, um, there's another artist that came out around the same time as this that I haven't seen on this list yet that I'm afraid won't be on this list. That definitely, if she is, it might change my opinion of keeping this on um, if she's higher. But she hasn't been on here yet. I'm afraid she won't be. Um, I'm going to save that for my additions at the end. But um, I have to take this off. Like there are some great songs on here, but there's also a couple things that are just like, all right, this one just didn't hit as hard as the other ones. But I don't feel like the album is necessarily redefining music. It's definitely giving us an honesty and an openness and like a permission to be more like explicit about like our, our pain that I think maybe other albums at the time weren't doing. But as a top 100, a 31, like maybe it was in the 90s, I might have forgiven it and been like, yeah, okay. But the fact that they dropped this at 31, I'm having a hard time with that. And I'm going to punish Alanis by taking it off the list since they put her at 31.
So that's it. That's what these look like right there. Um, just taking Alanis Morissette, which means I've now taken 14 off total, which is par for the course. Three more groups of 10, three more sets of two. Though I'd be interested, surprised if I remove anything out of the top 20, though I've yet really don't know what's in there. Uh, that's what they all look like. That's what I've taken off so far. Um, 14. Um, some of those really good albums, just maybe not top 100 albums. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to put up the whole list right now just because it's it's unwieldy. It's big. It's hard to do. But yeah, um, it's a lot too. So anyways, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know your opinion on these albums. Defend Alanis Morissette if you want. I would love a good hearty defense of Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pell. Heck, they made a Broadway musical out of it, right? Isn't that deserving of something? Isn't it? I'm asking. All right. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, share, comment, do all those things, and go listen to go listen to Public Enemies. It takes a nation, man. Chuck D, Griff, yo, Griff. All right, I'm done. Peace. Talk to you later.